Hi and welcome. I'm so glad you joined us. Today I am here with Kathy Kwiatkowski. She lives in Moscow, Idaho, and she facilitated episode seven of Journeys into the Soul. The episode was with Brandon, and the name of that episode was Mind and Gut. And it was such a great experience to watch Kathy facilitate for Brandon and navigate him through these spaces to where he found meaning and clarity in his life. Kathy, I'm so glad you could join me today. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Hi, David. Great to be here. It's been a while since I've been to Moscow, and it was cold and snowy that day. I remember how cold my hands were when I was trying to do the drone. And uh, at some point, I'm like, do you have some gloves I could use? My hands are really cold. <laughs> it was a cold day in Moscow that time. Yeah, I remember thinking, wow, you're going to be outside and you don't have any gloves. This is not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't prepared. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and even in the wintertime, it's like, oh, it gets down in the like high 50s or low 50s or you know, high 40s. So uh, at any rate, uh, thanks for your patience with uh, with filming and all that. We had a lot of fun together, and uh, we got to work on a facilitation, and I got to learn that you have a lot of things you're doing in the world. So kind of up front, I'd like to touch on some of the things that you're doing in the world. You're a, a, a Newton Institute Life Between Lives facilitator, and you've worked in that realm. You also did the multidimensional journey, and that's working kind of through quantum consciousness through Pete Smith's modality. And I know you've written a book, and you have an online course. So tell me, how are things in Kathy's world? It is very, very busy right now, way busier than I kind of ever expected it would be. But I am really committed to doing what I teach, which is listening to my spirit and following the nudges that I get. So at least for right now, I keep finding myself doing more, starting more projects when I think I, I finished one project, like I finished the book. It came out last June and I thought, oh, great. I will relax for a little bit, catch my breath. And very soon after that, I I just was strongly guided to, nope, now's the next thing. And I'm like, really? I really kind of just want to rest for a little while. But um, I, I'm committed to following the nudges when I get them. So yeah, so the, the book is out. That's a lot of fun. I'm trying, you know, the energy of that's moving through the collective. Well, and talk about your book, your title, and, you know, what the theme of it is and how it helps people. So the title of the book is Stand in Your Brilliance. Um, it has a long subtitle, which is a transformational program for... Um, remembering the truth of who you are, like overcoming life's challenges, remembering the truth of who you are. So I feel like I, I go through the world with two hats on. You know, I, I've been a trauma recovery therapist for a long time, traditional mental health counselor in every way that you could imagine. And then I have this metaphysical, spiritual work that I do. So um, the book blends both. It has a lot of components that come from trauma recovery. And I really wanted to emphasize for people in the book that there are ordinary circumstances that we experience early in life that we don't think of as necessarily traumatizing, but they greatly impact our inner dialogue, which then impacts our view of ourselves. It impacts our reactions to the people around us. I mean, there is this kind of snowball effect when you have faulty beliefs going on um, out of your awareness. So a big part of it is helping people to understand if you're struggling with something from a mental health standpoint, like depression or anxiety or low self-esteem or any of the, you know, the big things that people struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis, like look at the root of where that would be coming from. And that all comes out of the attachment theory and trauma recovery work from EMDR, lifespan integration. Those are my two main modalities that I use. So the book incorporates in a, not it's like a serious deep way, but in more of a kind of Mm, just natural matter of fact, this is what happens in life. And this is what you could be carrying around that you don't even know you're carrying around. 
And then the rest of the book goes into what do you do about that? How do you how do you peel away the false beliefs? And really the goal of that is when you peel away what's happening psychologically and energetically, then you're opening up to the awareness of who you are in truth, which is this amazing, spectacular spiritual being that is your soul. And your soul is always there. But if you've had negative experiences in your life, you don't always necessarily feel it. And so as you peel those things away, it's it's full of different practices to do, has exercises with reflection questions. Somebody posted a review on Amazon just last week and they said, you know, they loved the book. But what I love that they said is they said, do the exercises. The magic is in the exercises. And that was really the intention. Like, here are some concepts, but now let's take these concepts and do an exercise with it. Do some reflection questions and open yourself up ultimately to feeling your magnificence. And yeah, so psychological it has energy medicine practices. I talk about the life between lives, past life regression. It has some case studies from my LBL work. I talk about the quantum healing work that I do following um, Pete Smith's model. It has some some um, personal anecdotes there around how that helps. It has my own personal spiritual journey peppered throughout it. Like these are the things that I learned about and this is how I cleared them. And then ultimately at the end of the book, it talks about really connecting to your passion and your purpose like you do, David, and living from your soul, right? Living your passion and taking your light out into the world. And that that really is the way that we change the world. And right now I'm super focused on that aspect of the message because there's just so much going on in the world. And it's like, we just, if everybody can power up their light connect to their soul and live from that place, we will change the world. And yeah. so it does have a change the world kind of a message to it at the end, which I feel is really helpful for people to hear. I love the the soul journey. I love the idea that in our pre-birth planning, we're like, okay, here's a bunch of things I want to accomplish as a soul. I want to grow. I want to evolve and expand. I want to explore. And I want to experience trauma. I want pain. I want these horrible things because here in this life between lives bliss, nothing bad ever happens. And I want to go through some development. And so just like when you want to do some weight training, you want to gain bigger muscles, you need resistance. So I think we come here to get this resistance. And from everything I've understood, we create scenarios for us to provide us challenges to go through and to experience. And then the worst part of it is we can't remember it because we get this amnesia. We're like, So I love that you're even in your subtitle, it's remembering the brilliance, remembering who you really are, because truly we are magnificent. We are beautiful, bright, powerful, shining, brilliant, loving beings of light. And we come into this incarnation to have these experiences. And for me, having just that context, it goes, okay, so everything's going to be temporary. The pain, the suffering, the trauma, and the joy and the happiness. Let's find this space of just being. Uh, I, I love the resource that you have about showing your brilliance and remembering who you truly are. Uh, so give some presence to what you think our modality and reasoning for this amnesia is. So we can't seem to remember where we come from. Tell me a little bit more about that. It's, it's just the game. It's part of the game, right? Yeah. Like if we knew, would we really play the game? Would we do what's hard yeah. if we knew? So um, I really think a lot of it is about that. And the other thing I was thinking about as you were talking is it's so important for people to understand that even though we are these souls going through the world and this life that you're living is literally a play that you scripted for very specific reasons, 
it doesn't mean that you don't do the human part of it. You are meant to do the human part of it. You're meant to feel all those really mucky, hard feelings. In fact, it is why we come is to, it's an emotional classroom. It's not about leaving your body and not having your human experience. Um, the work that I do really blends, okay, let's work with your neurocircuitry, your nervous system. Let's learn how to actually have the capacity to feel all of those emotions in their in their brilliance that they're bringing to you, and then recognize that there's even more beyond that. I think that's the magic of it all. When you can be fully human, I mean, trust me, I have my days where I'm like, I am so humaning right now. I Like, what happened to all of those skills that I have and all of that knowledge that I have? I am totally not accessing that right now. But that's the journey. And then, you know, the wave passes and you open back up. And I mean, any really authentic spiritual teacher out there will tell you that they have their their awful days as well, where they're just basically in the human muck, just like everybody else. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Some days it's a thumbs up and some days it's a finger up. <laughs> finger it just depends up. what day it is. <laughs> I like that. I don't even remember that one. <laughs> so I, I know that you're offering an online course. You've probably thought, what is it that I want to leave with people? What is it that I want my journey to be about? And I imagine you've put together something that inspires and probably sure it educates people. I'm sure that there's things in there that you give as tools. Um, I love the idea of having those practical exercises in your book. Tell us about the online course. Tell us about the things you're doing there and how people can engage with that. So the course itself will run for seven weeks, once a week. Um, it'll be live and online. The basic format will be about 20 to 30 minutes of content and experiential exercises together. And then the remainder, it it's going to be, I think, 90 minutes each module each call and so the remaining hour would be q a and kind of like group coaching um which you know there's so much power in hearing other people's questions hearing the answers to those and so that's going to be the basic uh structure the modules loosely follow the book and i'll be adding some other things but they'll be things in there about how we develop these faulty beliefs, um, a module on the nervous system, a module on um, undoing the unconscious beliefs that sabotage us, a module on the LBL regression work, past life regression, one on quantum healing. And, and then there'll be little exercises in there that will that will do for people to not only understand better what these metaphysical processes are, but what they feel like. What are the nuts and bolts? Like, how does it work? When you hear past life regression, it might be, well, how do you do that in a really practical way? So, um, and, and then, you know, a piece around um, your passion and your purpose. But the main objective of the online course is giving you strategies to open up, connect to your true essence, and then feel guided. So there's a lot of things in there about how to be more connected to your soul and how to actually feel the guidance so that you're living from your soul as best you can. Mm, that's so beautiful. The biggest question most people have that seek sessions are, why am I here? What's my purpose? You know, what 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 am I supposed to be doing and accomplishing? Because I've got that that amnesia that I, you know, I can't remember pre coming here. And I love that there's a way that you can feel that resonance. You can feel like mm, I'm in the space that feels good for me. 
And, you know, I love the idea that it, you don't necessarily have to know how to do all the things. Just know that you're here to do these things. And if we can keep that contextualized, you don't have to plan out everything about it. You just have to be in that flow and that trust. And then those things continue to manifest. And maybe that's part of the faith journey of just going forward, knowing that you're being guided and helped through this process. That is such an important point, David. The way I mean, you just said it so perfectly. The way that it works is you don't get the whole roadmap. It's like, okay, what's the next step? And you take that next step. You you feel into if it's aligned and you take that step and you see where that goes and then you take the next step, right? And it just continues to unfold. The other thing that's really fascinating is as you can recognize what's creating the interference between you and your soul in terms in sen- in the sense of why is it i don't feel that connection why is it i don't feel my soul and a lot of people think of it as oh i need to reconnect well it's not technically reconnecting because your soul's always there. It's running through you. It's the energy that enlivens you, right? It's more a matter of, well, then why am I not feeling it? What's in the way of my feeling it? Well, what's really cool is once you clear those things out and you do start feeling your expansiveness, the knowing about the next step just kind of is there. It's the same thing that people experience when they do an LBL. The wisdom just drops in. And it's like, I don't know how I knew that. And where did that come from? Right? Well, it's coming from your higher self, or it's coming from some guides on the other side that are saying, no, go this way right now, you know, and at some point, it doesn't really matter where it's coming from. Right. (laughs) So just, you know, that you can trust it. And, and sometimes when I get guidance, I, I, I'm like, really? I'm not sure I want to do that. (laughs) Well, I I love that whole idea of faith and trust. Uh, You know, even in the Indiana Jones where he's sprinkling dust on the sky to find the steps, you know, that's such a wonderful analogy. You just have to kind of go forward. And as you put your foot out there, then you begin to see it's a hard process. I don't know that I've ever become comfortable with trusting because I want to have that certainty. But part of curiosity and part of wonder is like, huh, I think I'm supposed to do this. I wonder what happens next. And that's somehow part of this human experience is to not to know everything about the game. You know, I enjoy watching football. And if I watched a game and it's something that I've already seen before, I'm like, oh, yeah, I already know what's going to happen. I'm certainly not as engaged because I know that the team who might look like they're going to lose, I already know they came back and they won. You know, so I, I guess I'd like to have the idea that in in this human game that I'm playing, I just have to be in the present moment. And I, I it's so hard. I want that certainty so bad that oh, I need to know. Here's my list of things I want to have happen. Regardless, if I just go with the flow, I know that my soul is going to be on track. And, you know, that's just part of the journey, I suppose. Two things I thought of while you were talking. One is curiosity and wonder. Those two words, that's your spirit. I mean, that is the energy of our spirit. Whenever you, you know, like find yourself going, huh, I wonder what if I blank? Okay, that's a nudge. That's happening for you. The other thing I thought about while you were talking is, you know, I, one of the things that will be in the online course is a little bit of stuff around personality. Um, I've studied the Enneagram a lot. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I love the Enneagram. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone who works with me for any kind of a regression or any kind of metaphysical work, I, always ask them to do an Enneagram first because your personality typology, um, there's things that I can anticipate how people will respond or what they'll need in their process based on their Enneagram. But as you were talking about the football game and if you already knew the ending, it would just be a different experience. There's certain typologies that 
Yeah, they'll watch the replay because they want to know ahead of time who won the game. Yeah. <laughs> so that they can just relax and watch the game and they're not like on edge wondering, right? Whereas other personalities that are more into that energy of the excitement, they're not going to want to know like you. So it's just so interesting how that works. Yeah. Well, I know that there's different flavors, different strokes for different folks, as they would say. So uh, that's all part of it. Let's get into Brandon's episode. Uh, there was so much that came there. He was really connected to his intuition. And I know that you have found the Newton methodology, the life between lives, and you became a facilitator. And then you've moved also in this realm of setting with Pete Smith with the quantum consciousness. And you felt for Brandon, his episode, you wanted to do a multidimensional journey. So give presence to a little bit about what your mindset was around that, what the differences are, and how you feel that was the right choice for that particular client. At best I can remember, how I decided on that was from my own intuition, which is usually how I decide. When somebody comes to work with me, I'll do a phone call and I'll just kind of, I don't know how I do this. I just kind of have these windows open in my mind's eye. And at some point, it'll become very clear to me which one. Certain certain things, it's really obvious. Like if somebody is struggling with a relationship problem, I know that a past life regression, if they could see a past life that they've had with that specific person, it could really shift things. So um with, with Brandon, it just, I mean, like I said, was intuitive. Um, I really had no idea where he was going. I don't know how, but somehow it hadn't fully registered in, in my mind, his Mormon upbringing and how that had impacted him. But then in the end, I wasn't surprised because I have found that so many of the people who come to work with me have some kind of religious trauma. I don't think that's a mistake. I I grew up in the traditional Christian, uh, you know, conservative Lutheran church. I write about this in the book, kind of how I made that transition away from formal church into more spirituality. And I really understand firsthand the messaging that you get in formal religion that takes you out of connection with your soul and with your own intuition. So when that evolved as his journey, I was like, okay, well, I know why this is happening because that's what happened, you know, for the guides guide people to the facilitators that hold the understanding of what's been hard for them because they've had something similar. So the Michael Newton work has been out there for quite a while. People are very familiar with it. And so people who come for an LBL, they're usually having questions around past life and around purpose and the lessons that I'm working on and um, wanting to connect with their soul group, if possible, wanting to go to the council. These are all things that are talked about in, in Michael's books, go, wanting to go to the see their Akashic record. A lot of them have read those books and they have those very specific ideas. And, and that's what their system has gotten them ready for, is how I think of it. And so if, if I hear that, then, then we're doing an LBL. But the thing is, these days, LBLs are taking on different forms. Sometimes they follow the same form that they followed when early on in Michael's work. And then sometimes they have more of a quantum feel to them where you're not necessarily going to those different station stops. So sometimes an LBL can kind of morph into this blend of LBL and quantum. Sometimes I start with a quantum process and and people end up getting all kinds of information about their lessons and their purpose. And they connect with these beings in very much the same way that you would in an LBL. So the difference is how you go into, I talk about it as like, we're just traveling out into the quantum field. 
And in both cases, you're traveling out into the quantum field. I don't think we really know, like, you know, the spirit realm as we experience through an LBL, is that the same realm as the quantum field that we experience through a QCE in Peter's approach? I don't know if we really know. I don't know that it matters. Um, yeah, I have the opinion that it's it's all tapping into the same spiritual being having a human experience. You know, I in the show, I detail the quantum healing hypnosis technique with Dolores Cannon. I talk about life between lives, hypnotherapy facilitation with Michael Newton. I talk about Pete's work through your episode. Diana Paik had an episode with Pete's work. I also talk about Andy Tomlinson's work through Elamit Drucker and her two sessions she did. And every single one of them, the client gets the answers they wanted. And so maybe there's different areas to go from, uh, different angles, if you would, to approach this. But in every single case, you get into that spirit realm and they're like, oh, oh, I feel connected now. And every single client has this intuitive coming up. The answers are within, oh, what do you think the purpose is? Oh, I see now the purpose is. And Brandon was very clear. He's like, oh, Okay, I see I I can connect my mind and my gut. I can be tap into my intuition. I can get those answers. Uh, I, I very much resonated with his religious aspect of I mean, I had a different flavor with the American Christianity I was given. He was given the the LDS Mormon version of that, but it's still the idea that the divine is outside of you. You need to do something to become worthy, however that works. And if you trust your feelings, that's how you're going to get tricked by the devil, who's always the adversary trying to trick you. So ultimately you go to hell. And then what if those are just human constructs and you begin to unwrap all of that? Then you realize, oh, OK, this is part of my soul journey. For whatever reason, we choose the families for our souls to learn those lessons. So I, I think it's just such an interesting way. However, these modalities come to inform this, that, you know, we do arrive at those places. And I know that you were like, oh, this is probably the best approach for the information that I have with Brandon. I feel like this is the approach. And he got everything he needed. He got to soar through the cosmos. He saw how grand and big he was. He saw how we're all connected. He was connected with his own intuition. And it was just such a beautiful way that you facilitated it. However, you got into that space. So, you know, thank you for just being keen and tapped into your own intuition regarding that. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about the quantum is that whenever I hear somebody who I can tell by what they're saying, they're so out of touch with their own magnificence. The first thing I think of is quantum, because that's what that quantum consciousness experience does. It just takes you to that realm where you get to experience it firsthand. The LBL work, a lot of times people really want to have the experience of being in a past life. Now you can see other lifetimes through the quantum work because you go to the realm of parallel consciousness and aspects of you in other lifetimes can step forward. And if you want to, when they step forward, you can expand that and see everything that's happening in their lifetime if you want to. Um, it's just that people are, I think the the way in is just really different depending on what people's primary objective is. And for Brandon, for him to just really have that experience of being in his essence, everything shifted. He had that really amazing vibrational experience where I think at one point he thought it, it was going to like just start coming out of his skin. Yeah. <laughs> but that happens a lot for people. Now, when I do an LBL, I'll always ask if once the person is in the spiritual realm, if there is a healing that can happen for them and for them to be taken to wherever that healing can happen. So we are vibrational beings, right? And so when we get recalibrated that way, everything shifts and there's no way you can even put it in words because it's not linear. The one thing in Brandon's episode that I wanted to comment on is he talked about that domino effect, right? Yeah. And I just want people to realize that 
there is this aspect of the quantum journey where after it's very much towards the end and I present the question, you know, when when the person is actually feeling all that they're feeling and remembering the truth of how magnificent we really are, I just ask the question, well, would you like to ripple that out to the collective so that everybody knows that is the power of the quantum? And that was what he talked about with that domino effect. In my own personal work, I had done like six or seven LBLs. Each one were amazing. But when I did the quantum work with Peter and had the, uh, and maybe it's because my whole orientation is service to humanity, right? So when I had that opportunity to ripple it out to everybody, that like, that really fed my soul. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. So that's what he was talking about with that domino effect. And I just wanted to make sure that the viewers realize what that was about. Yeah, that's so good. That's there's so many nuances. We do the very best to create the story and to give presence to everything. And I, I love that you can give even more perspective on that. So thank you for that. Another thing I know that is you're passionate about is we're not alone. We're not alone. We're not alone. So many times people are like, oh, I'm just on my own. And you're like, no, you're not. You're on the mountaintop saying you have help. So give presence to that. It's so passionate about it. I talk about that in my book, actually. It's a it's very much the lesson that I've been working on in this incarnation. Um, that whole experience of being on my own, um, I've had in multiple lifetimes. I experienced panic at the point of leaving the spiritual realm and coming here. It was like, no, like I didn't want to leave the connection to source to come to come back again. And I didn't. I didn't know that, but then that carried through that lot of personal experiences growing up where I was left on my own. And so it's because that has been so much of my own healing. Now I'm passionate about making sure that everybody else knows that they're actually never alone. Yeah. There's no way you can be separate from your soul. It just, it's not possible. So because of that, you're actually never alone. I love it. Thank you for the work that you do in the world. It's so wonderful. I'm so grateful we got to experience uh, a, a session that you created together and we were able to create an episode out of it. My goal is to entertain people. You know, I put these short 30 minute sessions together you get to see a client you can see a practitioner what's the interview like and let's set some intentions what's the session like and then there's a follow-up but boy in 30 minutes there's so much to try to tell and you know sessions can be hours long even interviews can be hours long mm -hmm. so uh, you know i want to encourage people if if you're watching this and you want a session yourself you know, contact someone such as Kathy, contact someone, whether it's in your area or if it's online, have these conversations. This was part of a series, Journeys into the Soul. It's a docuseries about people that have real regression sessions. And in episode seven, Kathy was the featured facilitator. Kathy, if someone wants to reach out and get a hold of you, share your website. Do you work online? Do you work in person? Give a little presence about who you are and what you do in the world. So the website is kathykwiatkowski.com. I'm also on Instagram. I love it. Please follow my Instagram. I, I put stuff up there all the time just to keep you connected to your spirit and to help you to remember who, the truth of who you are. And that is Light and Life with Kathy. I do offer remote sessions. Um, what I tell people when they contact me to do a session, what I love about what you're doing with this, David, is follow your nudges, listen to your soul. And so if you're watching this and there's something inside of you that says, oh, I think this is the person that I would feel comfortable with, great, contact me. Otherwise, watch all these other episodes. Your soul will tell you which facilitator you're meant to work with. And if you listen to that, you will have a powerful session because you're in the right place. And when you work with a facilitator, you're not just working with them. Your guides have orchestrated 
for you to connect with that facilitator because that facilitator's guides is connecting with your guides. I mean, they're working on the other side too, to bring you together with whoever you're meant to work with. So when it comes to choosing who you want to go with, that's what I recommend. I love it. Kathy, I think you're great. Uh, as we close up, if there's one thing you want to make sure people know in the world, if there's one thing that they can take away from our conversation today, what would that be for you? I got to say too, you're amazing and you're never alone. Oh, you just got balloons that came out when you said that. It's a sign. <laughs> you're amazing and you're never alone. <laughs> I think that's a new thing that they do on Zoom. If you put up twos like that, I think uh, you get balloons. Oh. Uh, well, you just did. I don't know if we could recreate it, but that was amazing. <laughs> Kathy, I've had so much fun. I enjoyed meeting you. I enjoyed getting to know who you are. Uh, I got to see you when the cameras were off and you're authentic. You're you're the real deal. And um, I just think you're great. I've enjoyed working with you so much. And friends, if if there's a, a resonance with Kathy, reach out to her. I'd be more than happy to spend some time with you. And Kathy, I thank you so much for being a part of my soul journey. And to you, my friend, I say namaste. Namaste.